Class of 2026, Department of Dentistry. Class of 2027, Department of Medicine. Esteemed Rector, members of the Senate and Executive Council, distinguished guests, colleagues, family members, and friends. As Dean of the School of Medicine, I am pleased to formally welcome you all to the Fall 2021 School of Medicine New Student Orientation Program. Understanding the anxiety related to applying and getting into a competitive program of dentistry and medicine like ours, I would like to start off by congratulating each and every one of you on your acceptance to our school. Out of hundreds of applicants, you have been selected and recruited to study medicine and dentistry at European University Cyprus. Your class represents 28 different countries. Your class is made of individuals who have incredible experiences and who will bring amazing perspectives with them. Each of you brings something very special to our school and to our university. Now each of you will come together to make a new beginning, your beginning at our innovative and dynamic university. Today is a pivotal milestone in your lives. Today is the first gathering of the first class of medicine and dentistry. Going back to its roots in cartography, orientation in its most literal sense means using a compass to determine your bearings and your direction. When you are properly oriented, you're not only ascertaining your position, but you're able to move forward and find your way. In other words, with orientation, you're able to answer that important question of where am I now and where am I going? Over the next few days, our orientation program is designed to help you answer these questions. But our orientation program will do something else for you as well. Today, in your student orientation, you'll experience a major shift in your own personal compass. The needle of your compass will move across the meridian from you to we. This is what happens at matriculation. In the process of orientation, you'll experience this subtle but very important categorical shift from being independent to becoming a part of the EUC team, the EUC family. From now on, we're in this together. We promise to do everything possible to give you everything you need to become an outstanding physician or an outstanding dentist. The school's priority is to provide each and every one of you with the formal training and qualifications you need to practice medicine and dentistry. Central to our every effort is to put you, the EUC student, first. You're commencing on your medical and dental studies in a very special year. This year is unique as the COVID pandemic has allowed us to discover new ways to learn and new ways to support each other. We have gained this experience and now we're doing it very effectively. However, this year is also special because our medical program, only after completing three cycles, is stronger than ever. We start a new academic year with full accreditation from the World Federation of Medical Education and a departmental accreditation from the Cypriot Agency of Higher Education. This year is also special because the premier educational program of our Department of Dentistry remains the first and only dental surgery program in the nation. The dental clinic is now operating at full capacity, offering dental services to the community. There are so many exciting and fulfilling initiatives taking place as we move forward to achieve excellence in our mission of education, patient care, and research, as well as service to the community. As Dean of the School of Medicine, I can say with complete conviction that what makes our school exceptional are the faculty and staff who have shown an unrelenting dedication to you, our aspiring students, and their goal of guiding you to become compassionate, highly skilled healthcare providers of tomorrow. EUC School of Medicine, by virtue of its vision, is on a path of greatness through service. We are proud to welcome you on this shared path. In closing, I want to extend my warmest welcome to each and every one of you, 
our new class of medicine, our new class of dentistry. At this pivotal moment, you are now a deeply me valued member of the EUC family. Welcome. Hello, everybody. It's my great pleasure as the Executive Dean and Professor of Orthodontics of the Department of Dentists, the European University of Cyprus, to welcome all our new students to this orientation day. As you know, our five-year program taught in English is internationally recognized and follows the guidelines of the European and North American dental education standards. It is the first and only dentistry program in Cyprus and the graduates of our program are qualified to practice dentistry without exams in all European Union countries and the countries of the European Free Trade Association. It's very important to recognize that until now, 28 nationalities have been represented in the student body of our program. It is important to recognize that uh, our university belongs to the Galileo Global Education Group, a very big, prominent and internationally recognized higher education consortium that has universities all over the world. However, in addition to that, during the last month, the European University of Cyprus has become a member of the Utrecht Network, a network of 31 of the most high status and historic universities in Europe from 26 countries, and should be noted that among them, we have many universities that belong to the highest 100 best universities in the world. As you know, a dentist, the subject you have decided to study, is a person who deals with the prevention, diagnosis and treatment of diseases, injuries and malformations of the teeth, jaws and mouth, and also who has the responsibility and skills to replace missing dental ossos and soft tissues in order to restore function and aesthetics. Why someone decides to study dentistry and why someone decides to become a dental practitioner? First of all, because dentists restore oral health and transform the lives of our patients. In addition, by providing preventive care, delivering dental restorative procedures, eliminate pain or improving dentofacial aesthetics, the dentist can also experience the satisfaction of positively transforming a patient's life by restoring oral health. It is important to recognize that contrary to other professions, dentists can have independent careers. Dentists have the opportunity to own their own business right after dental school, and this is the reason our program aims to provide strong qualifications and skills for succeeding in this kind of task. The income of dentists is well above the national norms in most of the countries, and of course, a dentist can choose a number of career options full-time or part-time in private practice, in the public sector, in academia, research, etc. It's very, very important to see that in the U.S. New and World Report during the last year, constantly, the dentists are listed among the top jobs in the number of 100. And of course, in order to become a successful dentist, you have to develop skills and competence. And it's very important this competence to be acquired during the five-year education, especially during the years of preclinical and clinical practice. These skills should include biomedical knowledge, surgical dexterity, critical thinking, analytical skills, professionalism, management skills, and communication. Our program satisfies the competence requirements for the practice of dentists in the European Union, as it has been described by the Council of European Dentists, and also updates its curriculum according to the profile of undergraduate dental education in Europe, as described by the Association of Dental Education in Europe. Of course, we need to help students who are fully committed to these studies. Our students, in order to become successful in their studies and in order to become good dentists when they graduate, they must be dedicated, they show whole commitment, they work hard, they have to be ethical, they have to be professionals, and also punctual and team approach regarding their participation and work in the classes, labs, and in general the university. Our university provides excellent facilities and curriculum with regard to the first year and a half as far as medical, medical labs, 
also provides excellent skills and simulation dental labs during the remaining year and a half in order to provide excellent preparation before the patients are treated by our dentist in our clinic. Our students are trained and educated by international qualified faculty covering all the different subjects and disciplines of dentistry, including also dental specialities work at the undergraduate level. Your cohort, your batch, is going to be extremely lucky because in the time you are going to enter the clinic after three years, you will be able to use the new facilities that the leadership of the university has decided already to start building next to our existing facilities. When I finish, I'd like to say once more welcome Thank you. Thank you for, for the honor. Thank you for the invitation. And I would like to, sorry, to, welcome, uh, to welcome our new stu uh, students. Um, I, would like to carry on from I would like to carry on from where the dean uh, uh, left it. And the dean was very emotional. And I, I think I would become a little bit emotional because it reminds me my first day in the, in the School of Medicine. When I was looking at the, the internet to try and find what motto I should use for a welcoming uh, ceremony, for a welcome message from a chairperson, I found a quote from one of your colleagues from another university who actually said when welcoming uh, junior students, welcome to medicine, welcome to the, next, to, the, to the rest of your life. And it takes a while to understand that once you are in medicine, you are always in medicine. Once you are in dentistry, you are always in dentistry. This is a journey that never ends. And it's a long journey. And I know that you have done a very long journey. And for this, we welcome you. And we congratulate with you, not only with you, but also with everybody who was there to celebrate your achievements. But we also know that you had a very long road in order to get here and be accepted into a very competitive program uh, of uh, medicine in the European University Cyprus. We understand your fears, we sympathize with your, your emotions, but on Friday, you and your beloved ones, you are going to celebrate the white coat ceremony and you will the moment you wear your white coat, you will be a different person. You will stop being a student and you will start becoming a doctor. And of course, welcome to the rest of your life. It's okay to be afraid. I was afraid when I was, I was in your situation, when I was a first year medical student. I was thinking, will I be competent? Will I remember all of that? You may even feel that you may not be ready for medicine. I felt it. 90% of the medical students feel it. It is okay to feel it like that. You may even wonder, and I still remember when I was looking at the huge anatomy books, how will I, be ever, uh, how will I ever be able to remember and recollect all this information? But I'm here to be honest with you. Medicine is demanding. You will need to start the hard. Lots and lots of hours, lots of coffees to keep you awake. The expectations of the Faculty of Medicine are extremely high and you have to work in order to achieve the, our high expectations. And I know that you may be a, a little bit jealous from all the people who have not chosen to study medicine who live a better life than you do. But on the other hand, I'm here to tell you that everything is going to be okay at the end. First of all, as I have told you before, I have felt it. All medical students have felt the fear. All medical students have felt the uncertainty. And sometimes, my dear colleagues, it is fairly okay if you don't feel okay. But you need to remember one thing, medicine, in medicine you are never alone. There is always a support team behind you to help you and support you. For the university, it's us. For the rest of your lives, it's going to be 
the, uh, your colleagues. So in medicine, you are never really alone. And as the dean said very elegantly before, in reality, medicine is a team. In medicine, we practice everything in teams. So you are never alone. And you, ne you, you should never hesitate to reach out for help. Your achievement today is important, but it's just one small piece that will make you a complete doctor. The graduation will be the second piece. The acquisition of your residency will be the third piece. And there will be a fourth piece in the puzzle for those of you who decide to do and follow academic careers. But remember, guys, this is the first step in order for you to be able to join greatness. And you cannot fail. You cannot fail to join greatness for a very simple reason, because medicine has been created by giants. And even now, in the era of the COVID, we have learned so many things about, med about medicine that we did not know before. So you are going to be the generation of doctors who will be exposed to even more information than before. And we will be here. We will be here from the beginning. We will be here to witness the journey with you. In this slide, you see the major achievements of 2019 in medicine. I hope that in six years' time, we will have a slide celebrating your achievements as you uh, graduate the School of Medicine. And finally, I would like to say that the European University Cyprus, along with the School of Medicine, extends their hands and they offer their hug and they welcome you to something that you, are, you will hear me explain a little bit more in detail later called the Community of Practice. Remember that you now belong to a new family. You belong to the family of medical doctors. And uh, in this community of practice, we have several common features. We speak the same language. We have the same emotions. We think the same. We are different, but we are alike. So I would like to welcome our new students to the School of Medicine. Thank you. Dear students, I would like to congratulate you on your achievement in being selected as dental students. You have chosen a unique and demanding profession, a profession where you have to put the interests of your patients before your own, a profession that has to do with trust, the trust of your patients. I wish you good luck in an exciting in an exciting profession. Thank you very much. Welcome new students. My name is Maria and I would like to welcome you, all of you, to the European University Cyprus and to the Department of Enrollment, uh, the largest department of the university. Here is my colleague, Mr. Iraklis Chrysanthu. He is going to be your student advisor in the Department of Dentistry. I will be your student advisor in the Department of Medicine. Hello, uh, my name is Heraklis Chrysanthu and I will be your student advisor for the dentistry students. Welcome. Our department, the Department of Enrollment, is consisted of five main offices. The Office of the Registrar, the Student Relationship Center, the Planning and Reporting Center, the Financial Aid Office, and the Advising Center. Each student is assigned to his and her personal student advisors. Advisors are basically your key connection to your registration, add and drop process, and any other issues related to the policies and regulations of the university. We are assigned to you from day one until your graduation. Now let's discuss some useful information. All students are required to follow specific rules and regulations of the university. You can find this 
at our website. Holidays are very, very important for all of us, so please check up our academic calendar. Furthermore, you're requested to have your student ID card. It will give you the access to specific services around the campus, such as the library and the computing center. Get advantage of student discounts by just showing your ID card. For example, students pay half price for all public transportation. From now and all, all students will have a university email account. Use this email account to communicate us. Another important tool is my EUC login. It's the portal that will bring you in front of useful tools throughout your studies, such as the Blackboard, the Webmail, the Library, and the Moodle. We are always here to assist you, no matter what. No need to book an appointment with us. Our door is open for you anytime. You can always track us down on the below emails and on the phone number, 22-713-000. I would like to welcome you once again, wish you the best, and we will be here for you no matter what. Thank you. I will now call my colleague, Mrs. Cristina Colazzi. She's the international officer, and she's going to provide you information regarding the travel and the visa process. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to UC, the International Student Advisor. Uh, my role is to help you with your traveling and the visa issues and formalities. And since traveling has, has become a bit of a, um, a difficult task for many of you, um, and the, the government has set a lot of uh, rules and protocols, we need to make sure that you follow everything in order for you to have a safe and easy travel to Cyprus. If you are an EU student uh, but belong to category B, actually you have to register for the Cyprus Flight Pass uh, portal, check your country's category, and if you belong to category B, then you just need to take a COVID test 72 hours before your arrival. You travel and welcome to Cyprus. However, if you belong, if your country belongs to category C, then you need to contact me at this email, c.colazzi at euc.ac.cy, so I can send you a special letter and you will receive your special permission to travel with this letter. Then you need to book your ticket and get your flight passed 24 hours before departure. If you do belong to a country from category C, then you do need to self-isolate for 14 days before you can come to campus or go anywhere in Cyprus, according to government regulations, of course. If you're a non-EU student, then you must ensure that your entry permit or blue visa is issued before you decide to travel. That's if you decide to travel. Again, you have to register on the Cyprus Flight Pass uh, portal, check your country's category, and if, you belong, if your country belongs to category B, then you just need to take the COVID test. And of course, come to Cyprus with your blue visa. If your country belongs to category C, then you have to um, upload your blue visa on the special permissions section of the Cyprus flight pass, then book your ticket once you obtain your special permission and apply for your flight pass 24 hours before departure. Again, you have to self-isolate for, for 14 days upon arrival. Please ensure that you have your accommodation arranged before your arrival, as especially if you belong to category C, since you will not have a place to self-isolate if you don't. This is what Cyprus Flight Pass Portal looks like. Um, you have to, you can check uh, 
the country categories in there and you have to register so you can log in with your personal details. Now, after arrival, all students, EU and non-EU, need to register with the Republic of Cyprus authorities. The EU students, they, they apply for what they, they call a yellow slip and they have to apply individually. We help you through this process. We guide you what documents you need to submit. And non-EU students, they have to apply for the student residence permit, what we call a pink card, and they have to do it through the university. Again, we will guide you through this process, so have no worries about any, anything. Do connect with us, especially me, when you, before you're coming, especially if you're from category C, you need any advice you may get. So use these um, emails and phone numbers to get in touch with me before you book any uh, tickets. I hope to see you on campus soon. Welcome to EUC and have a great academic year. I'm Dr. Nikos Karpetas, I'm a cardiologist and I'm a lecturer here at the EUC and I'm about to talk to you about student health services and vaccination requirements for your clinical training. Before that, let me welcome you to medical school and to medical students life, which, as you know, from the, as the soundtrack of this famous movie says, it will be the time of your life. This is an electrocardiogram and an ECG, and it's a very important diagnostic tool in cardiology. I know you don't know the diagnosis. I just want to show you because it has many similarities with students' life, medical students' life. As you know, there are a lot of ups and downs. Let's say now you're here, you are at a peak because you are in a lot of stress, it's something new, uh, just about to start your medical school. Uh, in a few days, in a few weeks, you already feel better, but later there will be again some stress because of the midterm exams. Later you have your summer, your um, Christmas vacation, no stress. Then it will be a small up again, a small peak. We will be coming back and having to study for your exams. Then you have a big peak, final exams, another peak learning the grades maybe next semester again some stress for the midterm examination final examinations and before you know it the first year is over you have no stress because it's summertime please try to enjoy these ups and downs because later there will be a resident doctor's life which is more or less like this or like this. The important thing I want to say is that as in the ECG, as the electrocardiogram, a life with no ups and downs has no meaning. There is no life without ups and downs. As in cardiology, when you have a malignant and deadly arrhythmia, there comes an electroshock, saves your life and brings everything back to normal. This should be the case in your student's life. Instead of an ICD shock, you have to have a good friend, beloved ones, your family, and vacation to bring you back to normal. So, student health services are open from 8 a.m. to 9 in the night. Uh, for minor injuries, for maybe if you catch a cold, mosquito bites, simple things when you have a headache from studying, or when the night was too long. Uh, it's located in the EUC campus. You can go this way, turn right through this glass door, you'll find the hallway, then turn left, and you can find our health services, which actually look like this. So it's a basic office for 
um, simple treatment. If there is something severe, of course, you will be transferred to a hospital. So, uh, the, of course, the wickets are closed. You can come in contact with Todor Hajior U or Mira Your U under these uh, telephone numbers or via email. And regarding the vaccination requirements for your clinical training, please take care of them as soon as possible. Don't wait until year four. Okay? You can go up in the third floor and you should remember two important people for your uh, documentation. It's Haralambos and Urania. All right? Important people. You should sign this uh, confidentiality um, uh, undertaking uh, report. And the minimum requirements for, uh, according to the Cyprus Ministry of Health, are you have to have a valid health insurance. If you're covered by the general healthcare system here in Cyprus, it's enough. Otherwise, you have to have a valid health insurance. Be careful if you have a health insurance in your country, make sure that it covers you also in Cyprus. You have to bring evidence of the MMR vaccination, which is measles, mumps, rubella. You have to have either evidence or adequate, adequate immunization against hepatitis B. Uh, you have to show us evidence of the DTP vaccination uh, for diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus. And you have to show us results, negative results of tuberculosis, either with a skin test with the famous Mandu test or even better with interferon test from uh, the previous year. So overall, six documents needed, confidentiality form signed and the five uh, health insurance and uh, vaccination requirements. Welcome to EUC School of Medicine.
Um, it's nice to see you all again. I want to give you just a few words about the beginning of your studies in medicine. But in doing so, I think maybe I'd like to tell you a story so that it makes a little bit more sense. And the story is about the journey in becoming a doctor. And this is actually a true story of one of our students, one of our first cohorts of students that entered European University, Cyprus. The beginning of his journey in medicine, the way your journey will begin, is with the convocation. This is the student orientation, which completes with the white coat ceremony. The white coat ceremony is a very special occasion, and as you can see on the top picture, each student is given a white coat, and it's given and wearing the coat by its professor. Why? The professor is telling you, each student, that you're beginning your journey, and you're going to be part of us. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to guide you. The ceremony ends with each student taking an oath. This oath is a dedication to the ethics and standards of learning medicine. Very important part of the beginning or your matriculation in medicine. Over the six years, you come to the end of the journey, and that's the commencement. And here are some pictures of a commencement that happened in 2019. It's the graduation ceremony. And if you look in the pictures, you can see the same way in the white coat ceremony where the professor gave you your white coat and says, I'm here to teach you. In the graduation ceremony and commencement, each professor, each faculty member is giving you the hood. The hood is that nice green piece of velvet that you will be wearing around your collar. Green is the stud is the color of medicine, but they're giving you the hood to say, I've taught you, you're now my equal, you're now a doctor. And as you said an oath when you started your studies, when you finish your studies, you're now able to say the Hippocratic Oath. Now the question is, what happened to the student that I wanted to tell you the story about? Did he finish? I will tell you about it a little later after I give you some hints. And the questions that we want to say now is, how do I survive medical school? Do all of us survive? What happens? I'd like to give you a few tips, a few things to help you, prepare you to get through the next six years. One is to be realistic, to have realistic aspects, realistic anticipation of what you're getting into, to stay organized, to make friends with your classmates, to keep your eye on the prize, meaning remember why you're doing this, and to be balanced and take care of yourself. What do I mean when I say be realistic? Here, I don't want you to underestimate the quantity of the material that you'll need to learn. Don't waste time in the beginning. Plan on spending time studying each week. Don't leave it until the last minute. The quantity of material that you'll need to learn is way beyond whatever you have experienced before. And I want to make it clear what I mean. Medical knowledge doubles very quickly. This is an old slide. Here it says medical knowledge doubles every two and a half years. Students, I'm really afraid to tell you that medical knowledge is doubling about every three months. To give you an aspect of the magnitude of what I'm talking about, in one year alone, six million scientific articles related to biomedicine came out. That's a lot of material. What does that mean? It means medicine is going to change more in the next 20 years as it has in the last 2000. What does that mean? It means half of what we're going to tell you today as students in 10 years may be wrong, obsolete, eclipsed. And the problem is, as faculty, we don't know which half. So this affects the way you study. You don't need to memorize everything now. You need to learn to think, and this is what we're going to teach you how to do. I'm still on the be realistic. Keep up with your assignments. 
Keep up with your studies. This will reduce your stress. It will keep you in control. You cannot expect to do well if you study at the last minute. You can't expect to pass your exams if you're studying and cramming at the last minute. And don't expect to understand everything the first time around. Your first exams are going to be a little challenging. And this is because of the amount of information. You need to stay current with your workload. Be professional. Stick to your schedule. Stay disciplined. You need to treat medical school like a job. It's a task in front of you. We can't let it flow and say, oh, I'm not feeling so hot today. I don't feel like going. You have to keep up with it or you'll lose it. Be organized. You need to keep track of everything. There's a lot you need to keep track of. Your schedule, the slides, lecture notes, your required reading, lab plans, lab and clinical rotations, test dates. That's a lot of material. Organization is critical. If you've always been unorganized, and many of us are, this is the time to try to get organized. This is the time to try to learn how to keep your material together. Some tips on how to help yourself with the organization. Input important dates, set reminders, put them in something that you like to use, on a calendar, on a notebook, whatever. Save your paperwork for each course in one spot. Don't have it around in various areas. Prepare in advance. Use the organizational tools that you like that help you. Some other tips. Break your work down into manageable chunks. Don't look at the entire semester in the beginning because it will be a little overwhelming, but rather try to put it down in bits and pieces week by week so that you can see what you need to do. Schedule your time. Be as specific as possible when you're mapping yourself, mapping your time for yourself. This will keep it a little bit more manageable and you won't feel so overwhelmed. Some more tips. Rewrite, highlight, record, reading. I don't know. Each of you have various ways of studying. Find out what works for you. Often very helpful is if you choose somebody to study with. Choose, however, your study buddy wisely. Choose somebody that helps you, that doesn't hold you back or doesn't leave you behind. Quiz each other. Share resources. Take practice exams together. Figure out what works for you and do it soon. Some more tips. Don't limit yourself. You'll be given a lot of material. Lectures, written material on the syllabi, slides, notes, reading material. All of that information is important. Don't assume simply that what I'm listening to in the lecture is what I have to study or what is on slides I have to study. All this different material that you're given exists for a reason, so use it. Make friends. Your friends and your classmates are going to be a great source of information, but they're also going to be a great source of support, of encouragement. You'll be spending the next six years with your classmates. Getting to know them will help you. We strongly recommend that you join study groups. This gives you access to knowledge. It allows you to share learning strategies, like the muscles and bones that you heard for anatomy from Professor Santos, to share resources, to share tips. One thing that I wanted to say is remember why you're doing this. And I call this keep your eye on the prize. Sometimes after a long week of classes and studies, it becomes overwhelming. And you might think, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not sure I want to do this. You feel like giving up. Keep something around. Keep something close to you that reminds you of why you want to be a doctor. Remember why you're doing this. Be balanced. What do I mean here? Take care of yourself. Eat healthy, exercise, sleep, things that your family will tell you on your way off to school. A healthy body, exercising, sleeping will help you watch your stress and will help you perform better. If you let yourself run down, 
you won't be able to keep up. It's extremely important to find this balance. It's okay if you take a break from the grind. It's actually good. But remember your priorities. Separate yourself from school occasionally. It keeps you healthy. But don't let the fear of missing out from some parties or something else distract you from your work. And our biggest challenge we're finding today is the social media. Be aware of FOMO. The FOMO is the fear of missing out. You call the shots. You say that when you're ready to take a break and when you're not. Some final words of advice. Medical studies are six year long for a reason. You're here with us for six years because there is a lot of material to learn. There are a lot of skills and competencies to gain. And while you're doing all of this, your confidence will gain ground day by day, step by step. At some point, you'll find out that everything you were learning starts to come together. The biochemistry that you were doing, the anatomy that you were doing, it will slowly converge and make sense. Remember that medical school is not a sprint. It's more of a marathon. You're here for the long run. Ensuring your success for the first year, orientation. We have several days ahead of us where you'll be getting a lot of information. Advising, you had your student advisors here. Later this week, you'll learn about your academic advisors and your clinical advisors from the School of Medicine. And we have an early warning system. We will raise the red flags for you when you're having difficulties. The road ahead, it's long. Sometimes it's difficult. Many times you're gonna feel lost. We are here to help you and we have systems to help you so that you can make it to this point, to commencement, to graduation. Commencement where you'll be hooded by your faculty who says, hey, you're now my equal. The time that you will sign the book of graduates and you will write your name with the initials MD, medical doctor, for the first time in front of your families and your loved ones. When you finally say the physician's oath and the Hippocratic oath, that's the end of the journey that we were reaching for. Our first graduates did very, very well. And now you're asking, well, what about that story that you wanted to say about that one student? Well, that one student had a very difficult time. He got lost in the beginning. He got lost in his first years. He was put in with student buddies to study. He had advisors from the School of Medicine who sat with him. He had the student advisors from the registrar's office that you met earlier today. They helped him, they worked with him. He lost his mother along the course of his studies. He almost gave up. The stress of it, he almost gave up. But at the end, yes, he did graduate. Not only did he graduate, he wrote a medical thesis. He wrote a medical thesis on the disease that led to the loss of his mother, ovarian cancer. Not only did he graduate, not only did he get through this long, difficult journey that we're going to join hands and do together, one month after he graduated, he presented the first student graduate to present the medical thesis at a European Society of Gynecological Endoscopy. And we're very proud of his accomplishment and we're gonna be very, very proud of your accomplishments. So my question to you is, what will your journey be? How will you get through these years? We will do it together. Welcome to the European University Cyprus School of Medicine. Thank you. Welcome one more time. This time I'm going to present the standards of academic and professional conduct for both the departments of medicine and dentistry. 
First of all, you need to understand that I will be referring to everybody as doctor because dentists are oral physicians and the mouth is not separated from the rest of the body. So the same standards that apply for medical doctors also apply for dentists. So the first question that one should ask is what is a good doctor and how do we make one? And let's make a story. Let's suppose that we've got a land in Islam and as, uh, uh, and as we found it, you only have one wish. And this wish is that you need to go and make the best doctors there are in the world. What would you the genie create? This is a very difficult answer, but in reality, the genie has to go back into the medical schools and make sure that two important pylons which are the professional qualities and the academic contact of the students are maintained throughout their studies. So, let's start discussing about the professional qualities that each healthcare professional should possess, not only in the School of Medicine, but throughout his medical career. And the first and foremost uh, quality is that of respect. Confucius said that you need to respect yourselves and others will respect you. In medicine, we say something similar. We need to respect people, whether they are healthy, whether they are ill. And we should not make any discriminations. We should, all, all, we should respect all people regardless of who they are. We need to support our patients and not only our patients, but also their families, also their loved ones, because the definition of family is changing in uh, the 21st century. And we need to provide that support whenever the patient or the loved ones of the patient need it most. An important professional attribute of every healthcare professional is that they need to promote and to treat. And they need to be proactive in both verbs. So they need to promote health and they need to treat disease. One should not take priority over the other. These are duties that carry equal burden for every healthcare professional. Of course, if you've got very sick patient, the first thing that you need to do is that you need to treat the patient. But when you don't have to treat any sick patient, it is equally imperative and important that you promote a healthy way of life. Guys, we're living in the 21st century, and whether we like it or not, technology plays a major part in our life. And technology can be used to our advantage. And as a result, we need to embrace technology. We need to em embrace the power that it, it gives us. But this does not mean that we forget that the center of our care remains the patient. And as a result, we need to use the technology in such a way that we provide the best available information to the patient. Finally, we need to remember that no matter what the information and the technology is telling us, we need to respect the individual values and preferences of each of our patients. An important professional attribute of every doctor, dentist, nurse, I mean, I can't think of a, a profession that should not have this quality, is that you, be, you need to be an active listener Already we know that active listening is not I just listen to what the other person is saying, but in reality, I ask questions and I listen to them carefully in such a way that I am able to paraphrase, paraphrase what they have said and convey the same meaning they want to convey to us. A few years ago, we realized 
that the center of healthcare should not be the healthcare provider. It should be the patient. And the patient is a stakeholder in the treatment of his disease. And as a result, now we know that one of the most important professional qualities of every healthcare professional is the patient-centered care. There's a pyramid for patient-centered care, and you will be exposed to this pyramid throughout your studies, because the patient-centered care is a core value of the professionalism you need to exhibit as doctors or dentists. So, in order to provide patient-centered care, we need to give unbiased advice. And we need to assess each situation carefully and help whatever the situation might be by respecting the wishes of our patient. But in medicine and dentistry, you are not alone. Medicine and dentistry is a team sport. And as a result, you need to work in an effective manner with other members of the healthcare team, whether they are doctors, dentists, nurses, occupational therapists, physiotherapists. The center of our care is the patient, and we are the team who is taking care of the patient. So learn to communicate effectively with other members of the team. You also need to be proactive. And by being proactive, I mean that you need to be the advocate for your patient. You need to be the voice of the patient in any situation. But on the other hand, you need to be a mentor to people who are junior and they need to learn from you. On the other hand, you need to be able to be a mentor for other members of the, uh, of the healthcare professional team. And you need to understand that you don't know it all. And as a result, you need to be ready to learn from others, irrespective of their age, role, or status. No one knows it all. And that's why we need to work together and we need to pay attention to each other. The second pillar that the genie should go and work upon is the academic contact. And we use the word academic contact, but in reality, it is not only academic contact. It, these are qualities that you need to carry in the university, but also in your professional lives after the university. So the pillars of the academic contact, first of all, is honesty. No one likes a liar. And if a doctor lies, that's one of the most serious offenses. And as a result, what we expect you to do in the School of Medicine of European University Cyprus is that we want you to maintain the highest standards of academic honesty. You need to record all data from your patient into the patient chart in such a way that they are accurate and pertinent to the care of the patient. You also need to understand that when you are conducting research, because research in reality is what guides medicine and dentistry in the years to come, you need to conducted in the most unbiased manner. And you need to, re to report the results truthfully. Do not falsify. Do not play around with numbers so as to get the results you want. This is a serious academic offense. And you need to remember that re re uh, reporting uh, Falsified data can lead to serious disciplinary actions. And finally, when I understand the time that I understand that people have reached the point 
where they are ready, to be honest, is when they, are, they can admit to the errors. They can say, I am sorry, I haven't done it properly. The moment you admit to your errors, the moment, this is exactly the moment where you know your barriers. This is pillar number one of the academic conduct, but it is not the only one. The other important pillar is that of confidentiality. Confidentiality is not only an academic uh, attribute, it is also a professional attribute. We cannot go around and discuss what our patients have with people who are not directly involved with the patient's care. And even when we do that, even in the busy corridors, of a hospital, we need to do it in a place where other people will not be able to listen to what we are saying. Remember that the patient is a very sensitive being and his illness is also very sensitive. So it, these are sensitive data. The other about which is part of confidentiality, but in reality, it's not only confidentiality, it's the fact that the patient has dignity. The patient has the right to maintain his dignity even at the moment of his death, especially at the moment of his death. Another pillar, extremely important, is that of responsibility. And you will see that the bulk of obligations of academic contact fall within the pillar of responsibility. And the first pillar of responsibility is that you need to set patient care as the highest priority in the clinical setting. There is no other priority. Yes, you are there to learn, but not at the patient's expense. So the patient needs to be your first priority, no matter where you are, whether you are undergraduate students, postgraduate students, residents, or even consultant or attending physicians. You also need to recognize your limitations and you need to ask for help. It's not bad. It is mandatory to ask for help. As medical students, you will, you will be rarely unsupervised. But there might be times where other Healthcare professionals who will be looking over you might be busy. So if you cannot do something, seek help of a senior. Never exploit any type of relationship with your patient or their families for any purpose, either sexual, emotional, financial, or even educational. In the student behavior, both language and appearance, we expect you to be professional, not only in the healthcare setting, but also in the classroom. This means that we will not allow someone coming into classroom with an inappropriate uh, dressing. Do not use alcohol or, or drugs in any way that could interfere with your academic, professional, and clinical responsibilities. This is a serious offense, and it is your responsibility. And despite the fact that this is not part of the actual responsibility set by the GMC, I will add another thing here. Please note that your social behavior, especially in the COVID pandemic, needs to be restricted. You are the mirrors of the healthcare system. Never impugn the reputation of any member of the healthcare team, irrespective of who they are. We don't care if you don't like someone. You cannot go around saying lies about him. However, if you detect any unprofessional behavior, you need to report it to the Faculty of Medicine or Dentistry uh, 
uh, respectively. Never misuse property and resources that belong to the university. The university has the resources for you. They are yours to use, but do not misuse them. Don't take away computers, bones, or other resources. Because those resources will be needed by a classmate of yours, and they will not be available. You need to inform the people who are assigned to you when you cannot fulfill any responsibility. No matter whether this responsibility is an essay or uh, an IV catheter or the insertion of a nasogastric tube or a tooth extraction, you should inform the person who has assigned that if you are unable to do it or if you've got any problems in doing it. And one of the most important things that you will understand as healthcare professional how important this is, is that you need to arrive on time. I know that we're going through challenging times and we will not be seeing you face to face for a few months. But even if the classes are conducted online, this does not mean that you can log in anytime you like. Punctuality is a key attribute of any healthcare professional. And also remember that you need to take responsibility for your work. But on the other hand, you have expectations. And the genie had to work on that. What do you expect from us? Not only from us but also from residents, fellows, attending or consultant physicians. You have the right to expect clear guidelines on what you are expected to do. Whether these are assignments, whether this is test, and we, you, you, are, you have the right to demand academic honesty from us. You have the right to, accept, to expect frequent and constructive feedback from faculty and supervisors. And please rest assured that despite the fact that we will be away for this semester, we will always be available to you, ask any questions and to support you through your journey. And Whenever you are participating in any type of research conducted by a member of the faculty, a resident or a fellow, you have the right to be contributed appropriately and be represented and acknowledged in the paper which will be produced. And finally, I would like to point out that with all these things, no genie in reality can create the perfect doctor. The perfect doctor is created not through magic, but through hard work, through choices and persistence. And in the School of Medicine, you will learn that your choices matter, that we will expect you to work hard, we will expect you to be persistent, but we will be there to celebrate your achievements. Thank you. Dear medical students of the European University of Cyprus, welcome to our school. Today, uh, we will discuss about something that is really very important, and it's about your mentors and about your future, your residency. My name is Zoe Dorothea Pana, and I'm a lecturer in pediatrics. Me and my colleagues will be here to support you in your beautiful and fruitful journey during your medical studies at the EUC. What is actually the role of the mentorship? Here you can see Socrates, 
who is saying that human excellence is to question oneself and others. So that means that we need to communicate, we need to have a fruitful dialogue. What is actually the role of the EUC mentor and why every medical student needs to have a mentor? Sometimes there is a misinformation about the role of the mentor. You see here on the comic, I'm looking for a mentor who can show me how to get rich without boring me and without, without a lot of advice. But this is not the case of a true mentor. So first of all, you need to assess and you need to find a person, a mentor, that will help you throughout your journey at the medical school of the EUC. This of course could, could be a faculty member, a professor, but it could be additional, a medical student who can share his experience and his expertise in the medical field and can additionally listen, relate and be supportive to you as you navigate this beautiful process of your journey at the medical school. Here are also some tips for you. First of all, you look for role models. A mentor is often someone who has a career you hope to follow. So you need to find the faculty members and the students that are compatible to your personal vision. Of course, you need to ask the right questions. So uh, you need to learn through your mentor, the path to medicine. What are the challenges that you might encounter over time? So the mentor can offer to you advice, guidance and encouragement. You have, of course, to be open. Different mentors can offer different things. Some may be good at helping you find the correct network and find new opportunities. Others might challenge you differently in a more scientific level. Um, and of course, it might be beneficial to have multiple mentors with different strengths and points of view in order to have <clears throat> the best and more holistic approach for your medical studies. At last, you need to maintain the connection. Uh, mentors continue to be important as you enter the medical school, but of course, during your journey, it's very important to keep the connection and discussion and dialogue with your mentors. And now let's talk a bit about your medical studies. Of course, you will need guidance, and of course, there are committees at the EUC that can help you and provide you with further information about your future medical career and specifically for your residency. In addition to that, we can provide you with some specific links uh, where you can find more information about medical specialization and resi residency among several European countries. You can check also this link uh, that is shown on the slide. Of course, there are basic requ uh, requirements for your medical res residency program among the European countries. And apart from these basic requirements, you need to know for each European countries, what are the particularities and the special needs uh, that you need to follow. Of course, first of all, you have to keep in mind that you will need to apply with a specific application form. You need your curriculum vitae. Uh, you need a copy of your university medical degree, the medical certificate, um, of course, a certificate of competence or proficiency of the national language, uh, birth certificate and a copy of passport. This is the basics related uh, with your residency in Europe. And as I said, we can provide you with more information over the time. In addition to that, few of you might be interested to study uh, outside the European region, as for example, at the United States. This was also my personal journey since I have completed my fellowship at the Johns Hopkins Hospital uh, in Baltimore, United States. If you want or you decide that you would like to study in the United States, of course, most of you, you know, you need to complete a specific exam, which is called USMLE. It's an acronym, United States Medical Licensing Examination. And here uh, on these slides, we will go through some quick facts about the eligibility and the process. Uh, so the process has three components, as you see here on the slide. 
three steps as it is shown. Uh, step one, two, and three. And you can see for each step what are the requirements and what is some additional information that you might need in order to proceed. On this slide, you can find also what are the steps and the purposes of having uh, these components about step one, which is basic knowledge on medicine, giving emphasis on principles and mechanisms of underlying health, disease, and models of therapy. In step two, uh, it's more refined knowledge, uh, essential for the provision of patient care under supervision, with emphasis on health promotion and disease prevention. And you can see here on the slide the format, the length of the examination, and some important additional information for you. And of course, you can ask us, and we can provide you with additional info and practice for the USMLE exams. And finally, this is also for the advanced clinical uh, medical steps. Again, the format, the length, and additional information. Now, now going back to mentoring, uh, we would like to inform you that uh, the Medical School of the European University of Cyprus has extensive experience in mentoring, but not also in mentoring, in team-based learning. And you can see here that through our labs, the hospital world, we are all together, we have a, a very fruitful dialogue and we are trying to have um, a, a more, let's say, collaborative spirit in all lectures and labs during the medical school experience. And generally speaking, because this was only an introduction, we as the faculty members of the European University of Cyprus, we would like to welcome you. As I said at the beginning, we are here to support you in any way. We are, generally speaking, your mentors and your spiritual parents at this journey. And we wish you that you have a fruitful and very interesting uh, medical years because you are actually the future of the medical community in Europe and outside Europe. So welcome. Welcome to European University Cyprus and welcome to the School of Medicine. I'm Professor Elizabeth Johnson and I'm the very proud Dean of our school and its two great departments, the Department of Medicine and the Department of Dentistry. In place of our usual meet and greet in our typical orientation program, during the session you'll have the opportunity to meet your faculty and staff virtually as they welcome you. Our aim is to ensure that we will get through these unprecedented times together. Yes, we're still experiencing extraordinary times, times that the world has never experienced before. But I'm confident, I'm confident that as you meet your faculty and staff, you will see that we will be able to come together as a community and learn. We are in this together and we stay together. We become a team. We are now your EUC family. Class of 2027, School of Medicine. Class of 2026, School of Dentistry. I proudly introduce your faculty and staff. Welcome. Dear students, welcome to your new home for the next six years. I am Professor Ioannis Patrikios, Deputy Dean of the School of Medicine. I would like to welcome and congratulate each and every one of you for being here today. Welcome to the journey of your life. In the next coming years, you will be learning some of the most profound knowledge the human race has been able to discover and contribute to an ever-evolving field dedicated to helping humanity. You should be very proud of yourself and excited for the future. I wish you a very fruitful semester. Well done and all the best. Hi. Uh, first of all, let me welcome you uh, to the School of Medicine of the European University Cyprus. My name is Theodoros Xanthos. I am the Professor of Physiology and Pathophysiology and I'm also the Chair of the Department. I'm a cardiologist by training, but I have dedicated my life in translational research. Together and along with other members of the faculty, we are going to embark on the magnificent journey that leads uh, to a medical degree. Thank you.
Welcome to the Department of Medicine. My name is Dr. Panagiotis Economidis and I teach endocrinology and more specifically diseases of the thyroid gland. I'm looking forward to working with you during your clinical years, learning internal medicine and endocrinology. My main clinical and research interest is evaluation of the thyroid gland and endocrine neck. I wish you a very fruitful and successful semester. Dear students, welcome to the Department of Medicine. I'm Dr. Dimitris Dourakis, the Vice Chair of the Department and also the Chairperson of Surgery. During the next years, I will be teaching you the courses of Clinical Skills and General Surgery. I'm looking forward to working with you and I would like to welcome you, wish you a great beginning and a fruitful and productive semester. Hello and welcome to our School of Medicine at European University Cyprus. I'm Konstantinos Tsiulis and I am Assistant Professor of Internal Medicine. I mainly teach clinical courses from year 4 onwards. Together we will work to combine your acquired knowledge with developing skills in order to prepare you to enter your clinical placements at the different healthcare settings that collaborate with our school. I am looking forward to meeting you. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me take the time to welcome you uh, on my behalf uh, at EUC. My name is Dr. Konstantinos Sekmadjoglu. Uh, I'm a consultant gastroenterologist and I'm a lecturer here at EUC. I'm a lecturer of gastroenterology and emergency medicine. Uh, I wish we could meet under different circumstances, but unfortunately we have to deal with this reality from now on, at least for this semester. Uh, together we'll be doing a lot of courses. I'm the course coordinator uh, for uh, semiology, which is taught in uh, third-year medical students, where we will interpret signs and symptoms, and we'll try to uh, 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 make a possible differential diagnosis for all patients. Uh, I'm also the course coordinator uh, of clinical training too, uh, regarding the digestive and hematology tract, uh, which is taught in 40 uh, clinical uh, medical students. And uh, last but not least, I'm the course coordinator of uh, clinical tra training uh, 12 for uh, emergency medicine, toxicology, oncology and palliative care, which is taught in our six year medical students. Um, again, I would like uh, to welcome you. Uh, hopefully we can meet in person uh, and I wish you all a very fruitful semester. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Department of Medicine. I am Dr. Konstantinos Mikhailiotis. I am a pathologist and I teach histology and embryology. I am uh, really looking forward to work with each and every one of you in uh, histology and embryology. Uh, you will be seeing a lot of me on your second and third semester. Um, there will be a lot of uh, labs, of course, during that time, a lot of microscope. So I hope uh, everybody likes that. And uh, I wish you a very fruitful and very productive uh, first and uh, second semester. Hello, I'm Dr. Romantos Mikhailinos. I'm a general surgeon. I teach anatomy. And I want to welcome you in your studies in the School of Medicine. Dear students, I'm Dr. Ernst Angoridis and I'm a lecturer in internal medicine and pathophysiology. I am the coordinator in the first aid course as well as in the internal medicine course at the final year of your studies. Wish you all the best and a fruitful semester. Dear all, my name is Nikos Samboglu. I am responsible for your education in oncology. And I wish you all the best and a good success for your career. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, welcome to the European University Cyprus family. My name is Andreas Yalouris. I am a lecturer in medical biochemistry and applied dental biochemistry. And I would like to wish you all the best for your new big step. See you soon. Dear students, welcome to the Meet the Faculty and Staff Orientation session. Let me introduce myself. I am Professor Anastasis Stefanou full-time faculty member in the Department of Medicine. I teach on the cell biology 
and genetics course modules during the first two semesters. I wish you all an enjoyable and successful semester. Dear medical students of the European University of Cyprus, welcome to our school. My name is Zoe Dorothea Pana. I'm a specialist in pediatrics, so I'm a lecturer teaching pediatrics. Simultaneously, I'm specialized in epidemiology, infection control and prevention at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, United States. I would like to wish you a fruitful and nice and joyful journey at the EUC. We are here to support you in any way. Welcome. Welcome to EUC. I'm Tani, I'm Sophie, and I'm Theodora. We are the lab technicians. We can't wait to see you at the labs. Hi. My name is Maria Hanlambidu. I am the administrative assistant of the school. Welcome to our family. See you soon. Welcome to the family of the School of Medicine. My name is Tatsula Jensen and I am the administrator of the school. We are here to help you. See you soon. Dear students, welcome to the School of Medicine of the European University of Cyprus. My name is Alexandros. And my name is George. We are the lab technicians of the Department of Dentistry. See you in the labs! Hello, my name is Christy. Thanks for joining us on this 360 tour of the EUC campus. If you're watching on YouTube, you can interact by moving the cursor around to get a full 360 view, or you can use a VR headset to get the full 360 experience. Take a look at a higher angle too, it's really impressive. Our next stop is the Microsoft Innovation Center. This place is really incredible. It's where entrepreneurs and startups bring their ideas to life. As the only Microsoft Innovation Center in the country, it is no wonder that EUC has ranked amongst the top 100 universities worldwide in innovation. This is the Cultural Centre. Important world leaders and great academics have addressed the EUC community through the years, including presidents, prime ministers, Nobel Prize winners and inventors. Some unforgettable moments on the stage. Welcome to EUC's School of Medicine. Come on in and let me show you around one of the most technologically advanced facilities in Europe. Our med students come from all over the world and the program is fully accredited by WFME and has a great student-teacher ratio. Learning with patient simulators means you're learning with the most modern medical education methodologies. Small classes and close interaction with your professors help you develop clinical skills right at the very beginning of your studies. Equally impressive is our dentistry department, the first and only dentistry program in Cyprus. One of its most critical features is a fully functioning dental clinic right on campus. Using the most advanced technology in dentistry education, our students learn with high-end simulators to master their skills. All this is done in very small classes with constant interaction with your professors. Our dental labs are fully equipped with haptic technology that provides high fidelity simulation and training in augmented virtual reality. This gives dental students the real feel of working on patients as they develop the skills to become fully qualified dentists. Pretty impressive, right? We're now in the section of the building where you will find the labs to our pharmacy, biology and biomedical sciences programs. Students get hands-on training with state-of-the-art facilities. They're really getting the skills these fields demand. 
Did you know that EUC is the only university in Cyprus that has five stars in employability from QS top universities? This is due in big part to the Career Center's strong industry links and personalized career counseling. These guys should become your best friends while you're here at EUC. They're going to help you land that dream job. Let me show you around the library. This is a great place to do some work alone, away from all the noise. Students love to sit in these comfy chairs, pop on their headphones and do some work alone or to find a room to meet up with classmates and do some group projects. This is a place you really want to get to know right away, the Advising Centre. Our friendly team of advisors are ready to provide solutions to your everyday academic needs. These guys are really going to help you make the most out of your student experience and achieve your academic goals. This is what makes EUC so great the personal attention. Hey, just a two minute walk from campus, our student accommodation halls. You'll love the independence and the convenience combined. Living in the halls gives you the full student experience. They're not just a place to live, but a great chance to hang out and meet new people. The halls are built to offer students modern, comfortable and safe living spaces with just about everything you need at your doorstep. This fully equipped gym and wellness centre gives you the chance to find the balance between academics and socialising while keeping your fitness goals. We hope you enjoyed this 360 tour of the EUC campus. We're really looking forward to welcoming you guys in September. If you have any questions or want to talk to an admissions advisor, you can give us a call, drop us a line, or let's chat online. All the things you need will be up in a minute. Thanks a lot and we hope you have an awesome day.